you know, no matter what happens in our life, we can find something to be thankful for. I said, Lord, thank you that my husband is not a vegetable. Thank you that he died right away. November 26, 10 o'clock at night. I remember getting ready to put the girls to bed later than normal. It was raining hard outside, lightning and thunder. And all of a sudden we heard a pounding on the door. But just before that, I remember down in the village hearing a lot of crying and wailing going on. Now we'd heard that before, but this was different. It was much louder than normal. And then there was a man outside that said, Pam, it's Colin. Oh, I felt relief because I knew who Colin was. He's, he was from the church. So I went and opened the door, still wondering what he was doing up there in this type of weather and this late at night. And he looked at me and he said, John is dead. And I looked back at him and I said, no, my John is not dead. And he started bawling. He said, yes, your John is dead. John and I met at Blue Mountain Academy. And John was best friends with my brother. And I was best friends with his sister, Lois. But I never had it in my mind of um, dating John or boyfriend and girlfriend type of thing because that just wasn't me and so from that time on it was 14 years later one night I got a phone call from him out of the blue and I had to sort of remember who he was after 14 years but that's where our friendship resumed and we started going together and got engaged and got married so I think I would have called myself a daddy's girl because I always loved doing what he wanted to do and what he was doing. Something that my dad has taught me is probably to work with my hands and to never give up on my dreams. But I always had it in my heart to help others. Um, I just grew up with that passion in whatever way that was. I loved missions, but I loved a home mission. I never imagined you know, going overseas or to a different place than home because there's always a mission field right where you live. John didn't seem to think that was enough for him. He wanted to serve the Lord more. We got an opportunity to go to South America and we were there in the village for four weeks, extending their water line. And that experience was really what showed John this is what he wanted to do the rest of his life. This is how he wanted to serve. Friends were worried. You know, people just said, how could you take your daughter to a place like that? And, um, you know, actually literally calling us child abusers because we were taking our children to the mission field. We had no idea, really. Nobody could tell us exactly what we were going to face when we went there. But we knew at the time that that was the place, if the Lord wanted us to go anywhere, it was Papua New Guinea. We had looked and prayed for a mission that the family could be involved with. And more and more, you know, John was going out on his little mission and um, visiting villages, you know, and stuff like that. And I think that took a toll on me, being left behind, you know, at the house. And um, just the loneliness, and, and getting depressed, really. And, um, but I knew that this is what he had to do. This was part of the project, this is part of the mission, and I didn't want to get in the way and interfere. It was a hard experience for me. Um, I don't think I was totally mentally prepared for what I would face there. It was November 21. John woke up before me and had his devotions, and he finished packing his things because he was heading to Alma, our future home, for two weeks to start cutting down trees for our mission house. He had hired a man that knew how to cut the trees down with a chainsaw and his assistant. 
So that morning he finished packing and he looked at me and he said, Honey, there is something different about this trip. Something doesn't seem right. He's never said that before. But we walked down to the river and it was time to go. We gave our hugs, our love, I love yous. I had a hard time letting him go. And I remember waving goodbye until I couldn't see him anymore. We went up to Alma to see where the accident happened. John was not chopping trees down. He went up there to observe and learn. He was standing there waiting to do the next tree, like all of the other guys, when there was a snap way above him of a branch that was wrapped around in the vine, and the vine finally gave away. The guy that stood next to John grabbed at him, but not far enough, apparently. And within seconds, all this happened, and the branch fell down and hit John in the head. And I praise God that he was killed instantly, that he did not suffer. You know, and so my question is, Lord, he was your servant. You called him to come to the mission field. You know, so all these things are going through your mind, you know. Um, we came here for your people. You know, these are your children that you love so much. Um, you could have prevented that. Why did it hit him and not the guy that was inches from him? I, I question him to the point where, why did you bring us all the way to Papua New Guinea and take us away so soon? God does have answers. I don't know the reasons. I have to, I have to let it go and just rely on God to, to give me that peace um, that he's promised to give us and just trust him. It was hard for me because I was close to him, but I finally just, I don't know, my mom was a big example because she was very close to God. So even though I went through my hard times, um, I would always look back to her and she was strong and she was there and she kept on going and um, I think her faith in God really helped me to keep on going as well. Waking up the next morning, and just reliving what the last few days were all like. And I just sat out on the ground looking to the mountains. I just opened my Bible and, you know, I said, Lord, you're going to give me some, some encouragement here. <laughs> and I opened the Bible to the, the book of Psalms where the verse, and I believe it's, I lift up my eyes to the hills where my strength cometh. And I thought, okay, Lord, <laughs> This is you again. I just opened it up and there it is. And I'm literally looking at the mountains. After the death of John, God changed my heart so much. John was so willing to give away his clothes, to share our food with the natives. Um, and I was always you know, saying, but that's ours. Or give our medicine away for malaria. That's ours. He said, honey, we can always get more. They can't. And so he had such a giving heart. And after his death, by literally watching him through the motions of a missionary, um, I wanted to be that way too. Because of the situation God allowed me to go through, my whole attitude of life in general, of missions, of serving the Lord, um, took a complete turnaround and so he laid John to rest but he was making it clear to me that I need to keep going so when I got back to the States you know I said Lord I'm all yours like Ruth promised you know wherever you go I will go whatever you say whatever you do that was my promise to God Life is short. We don't know when our time is coming. Are we ready? Are we gonna stay home where it's comfortable? Where we have everything that we need? 
are we going to step out in faith and follow God's leading? There is no better place to be than where God wants you to be. Thank you.